and welcome to another episode on the Stretch Street Podcast. This is the Energetic AJ. And you can see like I'm just like relaxed and all smiles. Yes, because you know me already, right? You know that I do not slack in taking on opportunities, right? So my guest today on the show is someone who is visiting Dubai. She's here as a recipient of an award and we connected and I'm like, no girl, you need to share your story. Like we want to learn from you. How did you do it? And so she's here. And so I'm right here in her hotel room and we're recording. You can see like, it's not the proper like setup and everything, but it's working. You can hear me. You can see me. And in a short while from now, you're going to see her. So please take away all the shadow casting and everything. Yes, I know I've now pointed your attention to it, but feed or fist on it if you want. But please do listen to what we have to share with you today. Listen to her story, her stretch story, and the life lessons that this stretch story has taught her. Okay. So today on the show, because it's really, really super spontaneous, I'm going to go all the way in my trivia question to my guest today. So asking her who she is, what she does, a philosophy about life, and one fun thing about her. So this is like a mystery guest. So we're all going to meet her at the same time. By the way, just a clue. She is gorgeous. Oh my God. If you see her, you know, like, "Mm, you're an ex-beauty queen, right? (laughs) She's that gorgeous, all right? So, but if this is your first time here on my YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button and subscribe right now and turn on notification so you don't miss any of my episodes. And if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Breaker, Hyatt Radio, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, wherever you listen to podcasts on, please favorite us there. Send us a message. Let us know what you're learning from each episode. And, you know, let's get connected okay and you can follow us on our social media handles all the links are embedded in this you know in the description of this particular episode all right now are you ready to meet my guests ready 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 or not here i come i'll be right back with my guests stretch street podcast Yes, 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 yes. Welcome back. And yes, you can see my beautiful, gorgeous guest in the house already. Oh my God. (laughs) Okay. Like I said, she's a mystery guest. Of course I have met her, but I want to introduce her to you as if I haven't met her. So I'm going to be asking her all the questions, the trivia questions so that you get to know who she is and um, what she does and um, what's her philosophy about life and uh, one fun thing about this gorgeous, pretty lady sitting right by my side. She's so tall, like seriously. She's like, (laughs) if she stands like this, I'm looking at her like this. (laughs) How are you, Mercedes? I'm so excited to be on your podcast. (laughs) I really look forward to our conversation. (laughs) Awesome. Okay, so who are you? First of all, let's start with that. Who are you? Introduce yourself to my audience. Well, I'm Mercedes Vazquez. Um, I'm from Spain. Uh, I've been based in Kuwait for the past seven years and a half now. And uh, I think I'm an always... I'm a learner by nature. Mm. I'm a very curious person with loads of passion. And that's what drives me and that what, that's what motivates me and allows me to keep on going. Mm. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think I'm a, I'm a learner by nature it. and a Absolutely. lifelong learner. Absolutely. I, I super agree with that. And uh, it shows in the way that you actually connected with us, even at the event, right? Because you just like... Oh, can I take a picture of you guys? Can I sit with you guys? And it was just so seamless blending in and just honestly getting to know you, getting to know a little bit of your story, which we're going to dive into the more in this episode. It's just been lovely and it shows how um, of a teachable person you are. So it's such a pleasure to have you on the show. Now, what do you do? If you're going to describe what you do to us, what would it be? Well, I'm a multiple hat wearer, so I believe, uh, and this has been a journey, of course, but I believe, just like I believe in economic diversification as a principle when it comes to put it at the forefront, uh, different sort of um, activities that can help an economy to diversify. I think us as women, it's really important to have those skills in terms of financial literacy Mm. that can allow us to diversify what we do. 
Um, coming back to my journey, my experience has always been very multidisciplinary. So mm. I have always worn uh, different sort of hats. Mm. Even when I was doing one particular role, I was always exposed to the 360 degree uh, perspective of mm. what a business is about. And that has given me a wider, let's say, perspective or or horizon. Mm. And uh, it has allowed me to have a very holistic uh, approach to different sort of uh, industries, of course, but mm. also to perspectives. In life. Mm. And uh, so I basically wear multiple hats on the intersection of technology, innovation, and business. Um, currently, in my current role capacity, I'm the general manager of a Saudi uh, company and I'm expanding it into Kuwait at the moment. We mainly work with public sector enterprises on mission critical industries from responsible artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, geospatial intelligence. Um, I'm also a podcast host, just like you are. So my podcast is called Tapping into the Untapped, and I build bridges between continents through the podcast to increase female representation and participation in industries where women remain underrepresented, which is one of the main things that I relentlessly advocate for. So we can all thrive and uh, we know the benefits of uh, female inclusion and participation in terms of contribution to the GDP of any nation in the world. Mm. I'm also an industry advisor, board member, and um, yeah, that's what I do so far. <laughs> Look at that. If I had to read her profile, like that would be the whole episode today. But you can see she has done a great job in just um, summarizing what she does, but pointing out some very vital things that she does. Actually, board of, board of director, general manager, advocate, advocates for um, women inclusion in industries. And just before we go into your own story, let me just sit here for just a little bit. What does that look like for you? And what do you see in when, when we talk about women inclusion generally? Do you see it improving? And, you know, what has that been for you? So I think we will have to look at different sort of uh, data points, mm -hmm. uh, the global uh, landscape, and, of course, different data sources may tell us different things. Yes. And this is all industry-based, mm. right? But within my capacity, I think what I relentlessly do, and I really put a lot of energy and passion into that, um, is to sort of remove the stigma that technology is only for a particular uh, profile to thrive and to succeed. Um, so within STEM careers, it's really important to uh, increase representation and participation, and that is can start with the, within a very early age, uh, mm. from STEM education in, in schools and universities, uh, which is something that I'm very passionate of, and I have uh, had the pleasure of uh, doing it in Kuwait through different initiatives. And, um, yeah, so, I mean, I don't have global, like, data points mm -hmm. to pinpoint at right now in terms of uh, any specific industry that mm -hmm. you may be referring to. But within technology, so PwC, for example, had released a public research that uh, had stated that uh, globally 5% uh, of leadership roles in tech uh, were held by women. women. Mm. So 5%. That's, that's, that's tiny. Yeah. <laughs> Girls, women, mamas, we got work to do. Yes, we have work to do. And I'm just like very, very um, appreciative of the work that you're currently doing. And I hope that as you expand into different industries and different countries, since you work with, you know, people um, in the government and in, in power, that you're able to really spread this word to be able to help them. All right. So I would like to ask, what is your philosophy about life? Well, this is not aesthetic, of course, and my philosophy about life has greatly changed throughout <laughs> my <Your> humble <laughs> life so far, because that's what developing a, a you know a career looks like. It's mm. not a, a fixed it's not path. Static, yeah. It's not uh, meant to be aesthetic. It's not meant to be always like a straight line. Sometimes you are climbing up the mountain and sometimes you are yeah, in the valley <laughs> and sometimes you are swimming and you are finding different sort of ecosystems. So I think now it's a navigation from point to point. Um, 
And I think it requires resiliency, mm. it requires strength, it requires courage, it requires education, it requires having an always learning mindset, and uh, it requires dealing with uncertainty sometimes, and that requires creativity, because when you are facing a situation where you are venturing into the unknown or you are presented with an unprecedented challenge that you haven't navigated through before or that you have yet to overcome, I think that also requires uh, creative thinking as well as having calm in your soul mm. to make sure that the right decisions are mm. being taken and that a long-term view and perspective is being taken into consideration um, to avoid any sort of... Uh, you know, uh, impact out of a poorly taken decision, which at the end of the day will be a learning, right? So it's okay to it's fail, it's, so it's okay to learn. Yeah. And uh, that's what makes us uh, grow because uh, a kite does not race with the wind. Mm. It races against the wind. And I think that's a beautiful uh, metaphor in life. Mm, I love it. That's a, that's a very, very... Um, powerful philosophy to live by just being fluid to flow through life not knowing that life is not static so when you're on the mountain enjoy it and make sure that you do everything you can what you can do on the mountain but when you're on the valley yeah know that okay this is just a turn i'm going to get out of this valley and i'm going to climb up again fantastic thank you so much and one final question for the trivia question is tell us one fun thing about you <laughs> I think my main hobby is to learn. Is Hon to learn. Honestly That's speaking, <laughs> I have such a curious mind that if there is no day that is passing by where I'm not learning something new. And as I always say, learning can come in many shapes, ways, and forms. Just mm -hmm. like you are creating this platform of scale and uh, you know, putting out all of this knowledge of how different persons from different backgrounds, from different industries, are overcoming certain challenges, that's a learning on its own, right? Mm. Um, so whether it's listening to a podcast or listening to someone that I really admire and that I learn from or doing a traditional course online uh, or doing a physical program, I think uh, what I'm most passionate about mm -hmm. is that uh, nurturing that curiosity. That's right. So she's the curious cat. That's the fun <laughs> thing about that. <laughs> awesome. <Say so>. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for sharing with us. And now, guys, we're going to dive into her story quickly. Mercedes. Um, I mean, you know, we've had this conversation and just the sheer um, courage of you leaving what you've been familiar with all your life and just stepping into the unknown. And it's, it's just, it, it's, it's, you know, it's, um, it blends with everything you said so far, even without telling your full story or telling us the part of the story you want to tell. First of all, you are a learner, right? You're curious, so you're always curious. Second of all, you talked about, you know, some of your values, being resilient, being able to, you know, hold on to life, being fluid in life and everything. And this kind of just tells in the way your story that, but you're going to give us a flesh of it, right? Um, so um, Mercedes here left what she was used to in Spain. She's originally from Spain, right? right. And she got a job offer in Kuwait. Kuwait is in the Middle East. It is. It's the Arab country. Do you speak Arabic now? Sure, yeah. <laughs> Little bit. Wow. Yeah, I can differentiate the dialects mm. because, you know, within the Gulf Cooperation Council countries, there are so many dialects, dialects. like mm. um, Saudi, Kuwaiti, Emirati, but also like... Money. Uh, yeah, but also within, you know, the Levant countries, they have their own different accents. So I can differentiate uh, the accents. The Arabic accents. But I can't... Uh, speak, speak it fluently. No, yeah, but you understand it a little, a bit, little bit, you know. But, like, I mean, that's very courageous, right? She left, and then somewhere she... You know, for most people who 
migrate, especially when it's work related. They probably have gone to the place before to sample the place. Maybe, okay, have holiday there and see if it's a good fit for them, right? But, you know, they're just some courageous people like her who just like just dive. Like, you know what? This is an opportunity. I am curious. I want to find out what's out there for me. And they just jump. Seven and a half years in. And she's still looking this gorgeous. She must be. <laughs> <laughs> she must be doing something right, right? So, Mercedes, tell us what is your stretch story in your years of leaving the familiar and coming to the unfamiliar and making the unfamiliar now your familiar, and now spreading, you know, your 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 um your mindset, your your thinking in having women being in the forefront of different industries. Take us through that story. And then when you're done, we're going to ask, I'm going to, you're going to share with us the life lessons that those seasons taught you. So guys, don't go anywhere. I'm going to leave the screen so she can tell us the story. Mercedes, over to you. Stretch Street Podcast. Again, and this is Mercedes Vazquez with you. Um, it's such a pleasure to be on this podcast and uh, well, I'm truly enjoying this conversation. So basically, over seven years and a half ago, I decided to take a leap of faith and I ventured into what was the unknown for me at that time. So I come from Europe, I'm from Spain. Um, I had never been in Kuwait before. I had never been in the Middle East before in any sort of Middle East country or even in the Gulf Council Cooperation Council uh, countries, which is known as the GCC, which are basically Kuwait, Qatar, Bahrain, UAE, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and Oman. So one day I got a job offer through LinkedIn. So I use LinkedIn a lot. I'm very active on that platform and I used to share and I still share like public achievements, articles of opinion, industry news. And so one recruiter found me through that platform and I believe that opportunities come to pass, not to pause. And uh, I just took that leap of faith uh, and I thought, well, worst case scenario, um, I will learn something out of it. And I didn't have any sort of expectations, I have to say. I just didn't know what to expect, but I still had the courage to take that leap of faith to enter into what was the unknown for me at that time. Uh, so fast forward to that time, it has been over seven years uh, and a half now. Uh, I'm very grateful for every sort of uh, you know opportunity I have had during my career. Uh, from working in some of the largest corporations in the world to, uh, you know, very um, inspiring persons uh, in Kuwait. And I'm just grateful for each and every step along the journey. It has taken plenty of courage, resilience, determination, but also I'm grateful to rely on my faith and thank God for uh, allowing me not to never give up. I think that has been very important um, to foster that sort of um, anchoring. Uh, and uh, that obviously has uh, increased the resilience uh, along the way. So I believe that our story is our legacy and we are here in this planet Earth for a reason. Uh, if our story can help, inspire and empower communities to flourish and thrive, then we're putting it out for a good reason, uh, for good. And um, that has basically been my journey in terms of taking leaps of faith. Obviously, when one checks out someone's LinkedIn profile or, you know, they look at a resume, they may see like this journey and trajectory, but no one really knows what it has taken out of each and every one of these steps to achieve a certain thing or to get to a certain role. Mm -hmm. And I think us as humans, we are more than a role. Uh, we are humans who can create impact and who can give back through service, whether it's service in the community or it's service to others or it's service to a nation. And so I have to say I'm very grateful to the state of Kuwait for all the opportunities uh, that uh, I have been presented with uh, during my tenure there. It's mm. beyond humbling. I mean, for example, last year I was chosen by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia to participate at the Global Women in Leadership Program at Georgetown University in collaboration with the Kingdom's uh, Kiyadat, which is an organization founded by Nuf Abdallah al-Rakan. 
And so being part of this of that program for um, with women, 159 women from 17 G20 nations was just humbling. Or at the uh, an amazing gala here in Kube in Dubai, uh, organized by Nushin Mukhtar uh, at the Global Women uh, in Leadership Awards, where I was presented an uh, award under the patronage of His Excellency um, Sheikh Salem uh, Al Qasimi. So I'm just humbled by all the opportunities I have been able to have in the GCC, and I truly hope while building all those bridges um, that sometimes the road less travel is the road less travel for a reason and that now that path can serve as a path for many others to come along the way too. I love how you you keep saying, you know, you're grateful for the journey so far. Now, let me ask this. I mean, look at the journey. And, and I needed to plug this in here before, you know, I asked my father a question. The fact that they found you on LinkedIn. It means that you were actually doing something in Spain and putting yourself out there on a platform that matters documenting your journey on a platform where people who are stakeholders can find you. Please, let's sit on this just for a moment so that we can, you can tell us a little bit of how you did that for young women who are coming. Again, what you're doing, you said you're trailblazing, you're trying to open the door for more women to come into like the tech space, for example. But there is a way that you got there. Let's just... just this way, let's just look at it just a little bit in how to position themselves on a platform like LinkedIn so that they can be found yeah. the way you were found. Please tell us a little bit about that. Absolutely. So I started working when I was 17. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> and uh, while I was studying, uh, I was constantly doing internships because... I had this fear in my mind at that time that by the time that I will be graduating, my CV will be empty. Ah. And I have always been very responsible. I always feel this sense of commitment uh, since a very, very young age. I, uh, it has, it's built in without, within me, I believe. And so, yeah, I started working when I was 17 and I take a lot of pride in that and mm. I take a lot of honor because I think working dignifies one yes and when you do it with passion it does not feel like work at all so by the time I had graduated uh, I completed my master's in Spain in product direction and management mm -hmm. and I was very passionate about e-commerce at that time in Europe I'm talking about 2012 2011 mm. so e-commerce market was not really developed at that time it was it's not the utility that it's nowadays, yeah. right? It's not the commodity that it's <laughs> nowadays. And so, because uh, that required innovation, that required creative thinking, that that required a lot of curiosity as well. Mm. So, while I was completing my master's, my master's were in the evening. So, from 6 p.m. until 11 p.m. sometimes. And I was working in the morning. Mm. And that was for one year long. So imagine I was working <laughs> in the morning and I was arriving back home at 11 p.m. or 10 p.m. Mm. for five days a week. Um, and I think because I put that effort, uh, I was able to get perhaps an outcome. Mm. Like, to be honest, I, I think I have never lived the life of someone my age. Uh, because I have always been very relentless in that sense. Mm. And so by the time I had graduated from my master's, I already had a portfolio. Portfolio of, of experience. Yes, very mm. diverse experience as well through different sort of industries. And that already since a very young age exposed me to having a more holistic perspective. Mm. Um, and so... I think LinkedIn is an amazing platform and I always advocate for LinkedIn. And now I have been able to create a platform of a scale, which was, uh, which is tapping into the untapped as podcast, podcast. as a platform yes. where it's not only about the post podcast, but it's about 
how do we empower as a whole community mm. through conferences, um, through the stories that we're putting out there. And so, yeah, I believe in platforms of scale and I believe in ecosystems and I believe in collaboration, Absolutely. just like we're collaborating today. And yes. we met yesterday. <laughs> we met last night. We're making it happen. Uh, so great things happen when we support each, each other, other, when Absolutely. we collaborate with Absolutely. each other, when Absolutely. we are open to it mm. and when we execute it. Yes, yes. And um, so, yeah. Yeah, fantastic. I love it. I love it. Thanks for plugging that in. That's a good one. So if you are here and you're still early in your career, don't sit on it. Don't sit in school. Find ways to intern so you can build a portfolio even before you are out of that institution. That's a good one right there. Gen Z's, please listen and do it. <laughs> So, um, fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing. Now, I want to ask you, in this journey of, you know, seven and a half years, can you share with us, like, two or three major challenges? Like you were saying earlier, or, like, people look at your profile, and they see all the um, achievements, and admire, like, oh, she's a superwoman. But <laughs> what are some of the things that you had to do behind the scenes that were so challenging for you? that we might not see on the outside. And then as you share that, share some of the lessons mm -hmm. that this journey has taught you so far. Absolutely. Well, I think just being yourself <laughs> helps. Uh, just being yourself. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, um, so when you move to a whole different continent, mm. and I'm sure you have experienced the same yeah. thing, and you go to a country, uh, I was 23 at the time, I didn't know a single person there. And I, thankfully now I have a huge community. I'm really grateful to Kuwait, as I said. I'm really grateful to entities like the Ministry of Information for inviting me and sharing my story. Also now, mm. uh, to uh, you know, to uh, amplify that impact uh, that I have been having over the last years. But I mean, it has been a journey uh, when. You are exposed to something so new. I think it's also good because mm. it means you have more room to create more rather than if you have always been in one place doing the same thing for 10 years, 20 mm. years straight. That doesn't give room to imagination. That doesn't give room to creativity. And so I don't always look at the years because I think that's not a factor. It's about how much do you do within those Years. years how much because i have always been in very fast-paced environments and so one year maybe like 10 years <laughs> <laughs> at that time but it's good because that gives a lot of learnings mm. so challenges yes lots of challenges every day uh, there is something new that comes up you can't even imagine but even for those challenges i think i have always tried to keep things into perspective and mm. to develop a long-term view into it and sometimes uh, that calm that i was talking about before really helps because um it's uh, it's necessary to put it into perspective and to think okay i'm facing this today this is just a day here is how we can navigate this through and tomorrow or five years from now, this will not matter, this will not be relevant. I will not even remember it. Sometimes I think I have a very short memory as well. <laughs> and that helps. So for the things, yeah, so for the things you don't want to remember, you're able to shove it aside. Yeah, but the so ones that yeah. are important, you hold on to them. Yeah, because there is no point on holding into something that hurt you or that attempt to hurt you or that um, you know, was uh, not very pleasant to mm. go through. That mm. may be a lesson as well. Having a short memory for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's amazing. But I also like what you said when you said, you know, having a long term view. Mm -hmm. And so it gives you like, uh, it's, it's, it's truly brings in that calm to say, okay, okay, we're in this for the long haul. Okay, we're not rushing. So let's take it one step at a time. Let's sort this out on our way to that bigger, you know, um, destination. 
Right. So what are some other things that you've learned on your journey that you want to share with my audience today as we wrap this up? Everything happens for a reason. We may not see it right now because us as humans, I have to recognize that throughout my journey, at some points I have been short-sighted to think that, you know, um, everything that happens, happens for the best. Mm. And it happens because it has to happen. And I also related that to my faith. But that gives me the assurance that my view is very small compared to God's plans. Mm, I love that. I love that. Everything happens for a reason. Both the good, the bad, and the ugly. So when you hold on to God and knowing that, see, he has good plans for me generally. So when the things that we term not so good comes in, we're able to go through them to say, okay, what is this here to teach me? And I think, honestly, your teachable spirit and your curiosity to learn is really a strength for you. Because it keeps you like, okay, as tough as this season might be, what do I need to learn? Maybe there's nothing here for me to learn. And so it keeps you going and going and going. Thank you so much, Miss Ladies, for sharing your story with us. Thank you for being a guest on my podcast. Thank you for... <laughs> For connecting with me it's been a pleasure um, connecting with you and i look forward to having more collaborations with you i look forward to when you invite us to kuwait <laughs> for the women's conference and me being the mc of that event <laughs> <laughs> absolutely <laughs> tell us a little bit about your podcast so that people who are here can go check you out follow your podcast listen to your podcast and yes Thank you. So the podcast is called Tapping Into the Untapped and they can find it on Spotify or on Instagram, Tapping Into the Untapped. And as a natural bridge builder between continents, the purpose at the time where we are observing different sort of fragmentations is to unite by building bridges as a multi-stakeholder dialogue between continents and to increase female representation and female participation or participation as an overall because at the end uh, both genders uh, the strength is in all of us to mm. work together as a society Absolutely. and as a community mm. that's a real strength in my opinion uh, to basically increase that representation and participation in mission critical industries where um, uh, talents are underrepresented so mm. when it comes to mission critical we're referring to cyber security artificial intelligence climate uh, change energy transition uh, environmental social governance uh, foreign service um, public sector mm. uh, local private sector uh, of course uh, NGO world so we're bridging all of these industries together and um, we talk about future, we talk about uh, essential skills, we talk about navigation in life and uh, all of these leaders uh, worldwide share their story so all the way from the United States, Spain, Ireland, Mexico, Kuwait, the UAE truly diverse profiles because mm. I believe the strength once again relies on diverse uh, mindsets mm. coming together uh, as one Yes and to bridge those gaps of fragmentation, whether it's in the physical world or it's in an industry-based uh, uh, approach as a multi-stakeholder um, dialogue. Hmm, fantastic. Guys, you really want to go check out that podcast. Like you have heard it, especially if you're in position of leadership. So even if you're not in any of the countries that she's mentioned, if you're in position of leadership and you're advocating for any particular idea, that's a podcast that you really want to listen to so that you're able to learn from top leaders across the world, how they are doing it, getting it done, um, infusing diversification and inclusion into their systems and bringing to the fore the marginalized so that, you know, all of us can participate and, you know, add to the growth of our different nations. So please go check it out. Tapping into the untapped on all platforms where you listen to podcasts on. Once again, Mercedes, thank you so much for being here. I'm so happy to have this conversation with you. You have such a great energy and drive and execution. And you were like, yes, let's make it happen tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow, not after tomorrow. No, I no love time. that. And I think that also relates to the spirit of the UAE. 
Mm. And the visionary mm. leadership of the UAE. Absolutely. It's all about rapid execution. It's all about making things happen. It's about making sure everyone is heard. It's about making uh, sure everyone is included and everyone can thrive. Absolutely. And that's such an amazing vision that I have to say I really, really admire. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can say that a thousand times over. So it's a blessing to be here in the UAE. And so thank you so much, guys, for listening and watching today's episode. Until I come your way again next week with another story, sharing their stretch story and drawing out life lessons from these experiences. Remember, challenges are not exclusive to any, any of us. We all go through them. But what is important is what are these challenges there to teach us? Learning from those experiences is what makes us better humans, all right? And I'll talk to you next week. See ya. Bye.